Well, everybody, it's been a little while since we've done another video, so I'm going to go into some in-depth discussions. Uh, welcome to the Cobra Daytona build, by the way. Um, so I've had this issue from day one with a transmission, which is a T56 six-speed. supposed to shift like butter. It's supposed to be amazing transmissions. It's great around tab. Once you get the RPMs up, um, it's hard to shift. You almost have to wait for the synchros to catch up. Uh, it just doesn't want to shift quick. Well, I really noticed it when we were at the uh, track at Laguna Seca. Coming down the main straights, you know, high RPMs, uh, almost 8,000. Wouldn't want to shift very well. And then I noticed it again really bad at the drag strip. I mean, it just killed me. And you've watched the video, which is my last video. You see with the Corvette, when I go to shift, I lose a bunch. Because I'm waiting. I mean, that thing probably takes, I don't know, a quarter of a second, a third of a second, or maybe even longer before I can actually shift it. And I can't force it. It doesn't want to go. So I got the transmission from Silver Sports Transmissions out of Tennessee. I talked to them, and I, I realized that after reading their instructions, they talk about they want an inch and a half, inch and 1.4 inches of throw of, of, uh, on the master, on the clutch master with a three-quarter inch master cylinder with their, I don't, you're running a hydraulic throwout bearing. Um, I'm getting maybe seven-eighths of an inch throw, not even close. Um, the pedal also, the clutch release is very low on the pedal. So I talked to them a little bit, and they agreed with me that I'm not getting full release of the clutch. Um, it's fine low RPMs, you know, the synchros are not too far off uh, from one another, but once you get the RPMs off, it's too far and the clutch isn't releasing enough. Probably very hard on the synchros, both any, any way you're driving it, because it's tough on them. So what I've done, as you can see here, I've got a new Willwood 7 8 inch, um, 0.88 inch, uh, master now. So I'm going to install that instead of the three-quarter inch. Um, and then I think the throw, another thing that's kind of scared me about this is the clutch pedal, I've digressed, is very, very light. I mean, almost like driving a new Honda Civic light, which, you know, the clutch is rated for 500 pounds. So laws of hyd uh, hydraulics, you know, if you're not pushing that much fluid with a small cylinder, it's pretty light. But then if you want to push a lot of fluid, it takes more energy. Um, so it tells me that I'm not moving that clutch enough. So I'm going to install this. Because um, I've had friends get in and go, oh man, this clutch is so light. Wasn't that way in my Cobra. Uh, it was a tough, stiff clutch, and this one should be too. So I may even have to go up higher than a 7 8 inch master, maybe do a 1 inch. Um, even because they're recommending if 7 8 I should have 1.1 inches of, of displacement, of throw on that rod going to the master. I'm not going to have that unless I want to take my pedal and make it go way higher than the brake, which I really don't. I may add a little bit, see if I can get to an inch. Um, we'll see. I'll play around with that. Um, because I like the pedals to all be pretty much in a line, throttle down behind the brakes so you can heal the toe. So we'll play around with that, but uh, I'll maybe take you through changing this because I've never changed one of these masters out on these cars. It's tight in there. Could be could be a tough one. Uh, I'll suck the fluid out first, pull the reservoir out. I'll, I'll take you through the whole thing. But these are my thoughts, and then uh, we'll take it out in the next couple days and see what it's like at high RPMs. I'm hoping it solves my issue or makes it better. If it makes it better, then next maybe I'll step up to one inch or 15, 16 to they make it. So uh, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe and uh, follow along as I change out a uh, clutch master. Thanks. Okay, so step one, I'm going to take this cover off. And I've actually, this is one of the nice features. Here's my clutch master, uh, the clutch reservoir right here. Um, I took this whole panel instead of, like so a lot of guys, they split it here. Um, I basically made the whole thing one. So I can take this whole thing off and get a lot better access. So let me pull this off and I'll show you what we got. So once I get the cover off, you can see what I've got here. Now this is seal, by the way, to uh, seal between the cover and that so I don't get air down in there from the hot engine bay. Um, so I'm going to suck the reservoir dry. Um, then I can pull the reservoir out. And then I think I can probably get rid of this one wire harness here, slide it back and get access into here and get this whole thing unbolted. But I want to get all the brake fluid out, see if I can keep from making a mess. Um, yeah, but I got to get definitely get this out. So I'll suck the fluid out, and uh, we'll show you once I get that out of the way. One step at a time. I've uh, got the reservoir was bolted here, right here off. Um, so now I will disconnect this going into the clevis, which is onto the uh, clutch pedal. And then it's two bolts and one fitting here. Um, I've got some paper towels and uh, blankets underneath or some rags. That way I know this thing is going to leak some fluid, but then uh, this thing will come out and we'll slap the new one in. This should go pretty darn quick. Um, yeah, nothing too uh, crazy here. So let's finish getting this up and I'll show you uh, once it's all out. As I said, you got two bolts, this, 
line, done. So, and then I'll swap the 90 onto the other one so we can get that thing set up. Hopefully that's got up. Yeah, so this was uh, going pretty good. And then we'll uh, bleed it. That'll be the problem. And then uh, done. Making progress. So here's what we've got now. Um, as you can see, it's pretty wide open. So I had to unbolt this uh, just so I could swing this out of the way to get to the one nut in there. Uh, but you can see now I'm ready to slap the new one back in. So I'll mount the top uh, reservoir cap thing, which I'm not a fan of those things. Cheap, cheap plastic. They break easy, but they seem to hold up. Uh, so we'll get the new one set up. That's here. Oh, by the way, this is my son's new uh, 347 that we're slowly building together. So here's the new one. As you can see, definitely a little bit more uh, diameter there. I'm going to put this seal on here really good. Okay, uh, here's the cap. Hopefully there's a... Ah, there they are. And this one goes that way. But this needs to go on first. Oh, too tight. Okay, well, I'll, I'll uh, get this thing bolted in. You guys don't need to see this. Nothing too earth shattering here. Don't want to, you know, bore you. So I wanted to show you the difference between these two uh, master cylinders. Seven eighths, three quarter. Hopefully, let me uh, take it off my head so I know we got you. So look at look at the diameter difference. It doesn't, you know, seven eighths, three quarters. You go, okay, not that much. But once you see it here, you go, oh my, that's a huge difference. By the way, I did have to cut the shaft down, um, which I don't get it. You're running Willwood master cylinders with a Willwood pedal box. You think these would all be plug and play? But no, you got to cut these things down. It's, can someone explain that one to me? I don't get that. I've never understood that. Uh, but you know, whatever. Um, I also had to move the fitting, uh, this 90 degree angle, off this onto that one there. So I think this thing's ready to bolt on in. So uh, we'll get to bolt it up and uh, get some fluid in it. All back together. I got fluid in, everything's bolted up. Can't even tell it was apart. Uh, I lay, raise the clutch. I'm getting about mm, almost a full inch of travel now, but the pedal's a little higher than I like. I like it when it's not much higher than the brake pedal, but I don't think I can do it. So I think we're gonna be perfect here. Uh, I got fluid in. We'll pump this a little bit. You can see the bubbles are actually coming out. So I might just let it sit for a little while. And this thing might actually just self-bleed. Uh, so, you know, because I'm sure I got very little air in the lines other than the master and a little bit down right where it makes the union. So uh, we'll bleed this and then I will uh, take it up for a drive and wrap this thing up in high RPMs and see where we got, got going. So video's not done yet. We'll get back to you here in uh, just a little bit after we get this bled and take it out for a spin. So last night I finished um, installing all this, the, all the uh, new master cylinder, and I started bleeding it. Let me, I'm gonna get underneath the car and show you how to bleed this thing, because this thing's kind of a pain. But uh, if you look into here, it's all back to where it should be. Um, the pedal, I gotta admit, I still have a little bit of air in the line, um, so I'm gonna mess with that, and try bleeding a little bit more, um, and we'll see if we can get this thing firmer. But it's definitely the pedal is a lot firmer now. Um, still not oppressively hard. But uh, you can definitely tell a difference. Uh, so I went from three quarter to seven eighths. Um, is it going to be enough? I don't know. I raised the pedal a little bit, so I'm getting almost the throw I need. So I think it's actually going to be pretty good. But I may even have to step it up to like a one inch bore uh, or 15 sixteenths. But uh, we'll see. So let me climb underneath the car. I'll just kind of show you how to bleed this thing, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to start by probably I'm going to screw this cap off first because we're just going to open the bottom bleeder and let it drain out into a cup. Oh man, things on there tight. So, so we're just going to kind of set that on there. So hopefully you guys can see this. Um, with this, yeah, hopefully you can see it. Uh, with this hydraulic throwout bearing, there is just one. This is the only bleeder. Um, it's the only line in and out of the throwout bearing. So this thing could be a little tough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack this thing open and just let it drain. Uh, we'll just let it gravity bleed for a little while and see what we get. So hopefully you can see this. So I got it down there. We're going to vacuum bleed this until it's getting close to the end. Then I'll dump in some fresh. This was just some, um, I used just garbage flu fluid. Um, when I'm bleeding something like this, I use garbage fluid to just cut all the air out. And then I'll basically drain that almost empty, but not get all the air out of the line and then put really good fluid in. 
uh, just something I do. Instead of wasting very expensive fluid, I'll buy like $3 Peak Special at the hardware store. And that's kind of my bleeding fluid. And uh, as I said, then I'll run this thing all the way down, dump in the good fluid, let it bleed for a little while longer, seal it up, and then I know I got the good stuff in there. So just what I do. Okay, I'll uh, see how it works when I'm done. So there's one thing I did do to give me a little pedal thrust. You can see now the clutch pedal is probably about an inch and a half higher than the brake pedal. Um, I did that so that way I get almost a full inch of throw out of that with that 7 8 inch master I should be golden Okay, so that was a quickie little video I guess um, as I said just trying to iron out some of the not issues some of the things that bug me um, By the time I'm done with this car. It'll be perfect. I mean this will drive like a new car It'll ever shift it'll just it'll be perfect. I'm still got a little engine issue too by the way uh, when you fire it up cold, it runs rough for like 10, 12 seconds and then smooths out. Got to work with Lund on the tune. Uh, there's pretty much nobody in California where it does tunes, so I'm kind of struggling there. But, uh, you know, the clutch feels good. I haven't talking out and driven it yet, but it feels good just sitting there. Um, I got an autocross hopefully this weekend, so we'll get some in-car camera footage of that, get another video up. But I wanted to get this one up just to let you know that... Uh, you know, the clutch issue, uh, be aware of that. So definitely make sure you pick your masters, your slaves, uh, so they're all kind of the right size, so they all work together in harmony. So thanks again for watching, and hit subscribe, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode of the Cobra Daytona Build.